we're recording. All right, and um, just give a moment for um, attendees to join. But we are uh, we are underway, and uh, if you'd like, I can take the roll. Please do. Broughton? Here. Chen. Cisneros? Here. De La Cruz? Delen? Here. Duran? Present. Nong? Here. Bertula? Here. Shelby? Present. Sewell? Here. Stallings? Tony? Present. The leg? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you, Dag. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this meeting of the Board of Trustees of the State Bar of California. Uh, we are, um, our game plan for this morning, as previously announced, is we are going to begin our discussions this morning with closed session for about one hour, and we plan to return to open session and uh, invite public comment on the open session agenda and cover our open session agenda items at that time. Uh, if we need to uh, complete a closed session discussion, we will, we will resume closed session after the, the open session. Uh, so with that background, I want to invite public comment at this time uh, on the closed session agenda. If anyone has comments on the closed session agenda, please raise your hand in Zoom. If you want to comment on open session agenda items, uh, please wait until uh, the 11 o'clock session if you can. And to be clear, one public comment uh, per person, whether you give it now or, or later in our meeting. So with that, let's see if we have any raised hands. I don't see any. Dag, do you see any hands? Do not. No. All right. So with that, we will um, recess our open session and move into closed sessions. Uh, trustees and, and staff, you will get a link in your email to the closed session, and we will continue over there. We are going to be resuming open session. Uh, the board has a recess closed session, which by the way, was closed pursuant to government code section 11126 subdivision A1. And uh, just for the public's information, the board will be resuming the closed session after we complete our closed session agenda. Um, let's see. Um, I'll just wait another moment for more members to join. Uh, Dag, are we broadcasting at the moment? Yes, we are. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there's nine, that's a quorum. So um, Dag, would you please take the role for the resumed open session? Broughton. Here. Chen. Cisneros. Here. D De La Cruz. Delen. Duran. Present. Ganong. Here. Bertula. Here. Shelby. Present. So, so we'll Dag, here, Juan De La Cruz. Thank you, Juan. Uh, uh, so will. Uh, I'm here, Dag. Stallings. Here. Tony. Seleg. Here. Uh, we have a quorum. Thank you, Dag. All right. Uh, first item on our agenda will be a call for public comment. Uh, for members of the public, if you would like to address the Board of Trustees, please use the raise hand function in Zoom. I will give you a moment to do that. I see one. Let me just see if anyone else is going to speak. Uh, so we have one person. So um, I see that Ellen Pansky has raised her hand. Um, Ellen is a member of the Ad Hoc Commission on the Disciplinary System for the board's information. And uh, Ellen, you have five minutes. Thank you very much. Um, I really welcome the opportunity to address you 
I don't see myself on the screen, but I'm assuming that I am visible to you. Uh, the reason that I'm- uh, Ellen, Actually, I don't, I don't wanna interrupt, but, but no, we uh, um, members of the public are not visible for security reasons. So we'll, we'll just hear your audio. Thank you so much. Thanks for that clarification. Um, I am addressing you today as a member of the Ad Hoc Commission on Discipline. And um, as I'm sure the board is well aware um, of the approximate 24 members of the commission, two of us, uh, Ed Lear and myself, are uh, members of the Association of Disciplinary Defense Council, and we regularly appear at the State Bar Court. And we are actively participating on the commission uh, with respect to the core uh, issues uh, as set forth in the mission statement, um, which include uh, the concerns about uh, inequities in the system, and in particular, the recent report that concluded that uh, black male lawyers are disciplined at a substantially higher rate than other lawyers. Um, but also because uh, Ed and I both have many years of experience representing lawyers before the state bar court, and um, we have some specific uh, recommendations, and we'd uh, like to really, to use the current phrase, do a deep dive into ways in which the system could be more effective and more efficient and also more fair. Um, I only learned less than 24 hours ago that there was a proposal to expand the number of members of the commission. And um, both uh, Ruben Duran and Sean Seleg were kind enough to speak with Ed and, and me yesterday afternoon. So I now have more information and I have a better understanding of why uh, there is a proposal to increase the commission by adding four non-lawyer members. Um, but I do have a remaining concern that the commission has already commenced its work. We've had well, I participated in three substantive meetings, which took the better part of a full day each. And um, I think we're pretty much at the end of uh, the educational portion of our uh, commission activities. And to start anew would frankly be burdensome. And I'm also concerned that it's gonna result in delay. So you know, per, I would say purely as a practical matter, I do have some remaining concern about expanding the commission at this point when it's already been in existence for months and we've been working uh, diligently for months to move forward. Um, but in addition to that, I have been thinking about it since I spoke yesterday evening with both Mr. Duran and Mr. Seleg. And I, I also think that in the event that the commission is going to be expanded, I think that thought should be given to bringing in more individuals um, who have experience in analyzing governmental prosecutorial agencies. Um, as you know, or at least according to the budget that I reviewed this morning, uh, the Office of the Chief Trial Counsel uh, receives approximately 30% or just over 30% of the current State Bar budget, which is in the range of $200 million a year. Ms. Beth, so, can you please wrap up your comments? Thank you. Ms. Fancy, the, Ms. Fancy, the, that was th the three minute mark was the sound that you heard there. Okay. I'm sorry, Dan, uh, I thought I heard Sean give Ms. Pansky five minutes. I'm sorry, I, I, that, I didn't hear that. That's right. Thanks, Ruben. Apologies. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, so, so it occurs to me, given that part of what we're looking at here is to promote the uh, efficiency of the disciplinary system in addition to the fairness issues, if we're going to bring more people on the commission, I think it would be helpful for the commission to have individuals who are not only just not lawyers, but perhaps some individuals who can help us uh, do a better job of figuring out where efficiencies could be uh, improved. Um, are these substantial dollars, which seem to be in the range of $60 million annually, uh, being spent in the most efficient manner? Um, it would, we're talking in, on our commission of prioritizing the tasks within the Office of the Chief Trial Counsel um, and making the system run better, quicker, less expensively. I, I think it would be helpful to bring in uh, 
one or more individuals and perhaps even the auditor whose report recently came out, who has some criticisms of the way the caseload, the workflow was being managed um, to help us make some concrete recommendations with respect to uh, how the work is being handled. What is the volume of work? Is it being handled efficiently? Should resources be reallocated? I think the last thing that uh, at least the members of the state bar, the lawyer members uh, of the state bar want to see is having their dues raised again. And I'm hoping that one of the things that the commission can do is find a way to accomplish these goals without having another dues increase. And again, with the $60 million annual budget, uh, it seems to me that should be doable. Um, so those are my thoughts and I wanna thank you very much for allowing me to speak today. And if there's any questions, I know I have perhaps a minute left, I'm happy to answer them. All right, thank you, Ellen. And thank you for your service on the Discipline Commission. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, um, let's move on to the chair's report. Um, today, as uh, board members can see from the agenda, we will be discussing the State Bar's position on Senate Bill 211, which is our annual fee bill for the State Bar. We have an extraordinary situation this year in that the fee bill has been amended to provide that, quote, unless and until the Senate confirms the appointment of a chief trial counsel, there will be no fee. Uh, the end quote's in there somewhere, I missed it. Uh, this obviously presents a major problem for this organization because among other reasons, the chief trial counsel is typically not up for confirmation until the year after appointment and the legislative session is very far, far along in the year. Um, in addition, while the chief trial counsel selection process is confidential, it is public that the board is actively working on appointing a chief trial counsel. And in fact, uh, discussed that very topic um, this morning in closed session and will continue that discussion after the open session today. The board is acting carefully and deliberatively in light of the importance of that appointment. Um, we know how important it is and we want to be sure that we make the right decision. Not giving the state bar authority to collect the licensing fee from attorneys next year in 2022 will do irreparable harm to state bar operations and will not advance any reform initiative. It will move us backwards and is counterintuitive to our ongoing efforts and we know efforts that the legislature wants us to undertake to continue improving and reforming the state bar of California. I want to remind board members that in 2019, the state auditor responded to a workforce study that the state bar conducted regarding the Office of Chief Trial Counsel. And that study concluded that OCTC needed 58 additional personnel to clear the statutory backlog. That would have allowed for the creation of three new enforcement teams in the Office of Chief Trial Counsel. Uh, in that year, 2019, the state auditor recommended funding for 19 of the 58 positions that the study supported. That's about one team instead of three. And uh, we were grateful to the legislature for incorporating that increase into the 2020 fee bill. The auditor in 2019 also recommended that there be further gradual increases in staffing in 2021 and beyond. Prior to its amendment, however, the current fee bill for 2022 provided the same fee as 2021, pardon me, 2020 and 2021. So while we still need those positions, uh, obviously providing for no fee at all is, uh, would be disastrous to the state bar's operation and to its public protection mission, as well as contrary to the state auditor's recommendation in 2019. I will note that at, in 2019, it was calculated that it would have required only an additional $26 per year per attorney to fund the two additional teams to bring the total of new positions in OCTC up to 58. Um, we very much need a partnership with the legislature to provide the state bar with the funding it needs to carry out its public protection mission. Uh, later on our agenda, the board will be asked to discuss what its position on SB 211 as amended will be. With that, let me move to our business agenda. We have two items. First is item 701 regarding the ad hoc commission on the discipline commission and expansion of its membership. Uh, Justin, I believe you're going to present on this. Yes, thank you, Chair. 
Uh, I am the staff person for the Ad Hoc Commission on the Discipline System. As a quick reminder, Ms. Pansky talked about it, but the commission was established to engage in a comprehensive review of the discipline system, specifically looking at the reforms and restructuring the state bar has undertaken in recent years to improve the effectiveness and fairness of the attorney discipline system. The commission consists of lawyers, judges, experts in attorney discipline, and professional regulation. The specific makeup of the commission is in the agenda item. Why I'm here today is after the first couple of meetings of the commission and its two subcommittees, the effectiveness subcommittee and the fairness subcommittee, the chair has determined that the commission would benefit from an expansion of its non-attorney membership. The addition of such members will amplify the voice of consumers in discussions on how to improve the state bar discipline system. The resolution calls for the appointment of up to four non-lawyer consumer members. That's the agenda item in a nutshell, and I'll be happy to answer any questions about it. Um, thank you, Justin. And um, just as a minor detail point, looking at the resolution, I should have thought of this before. Um, we typically define um, non-lawyers to be a person who has never been a lawyer, so that disbarred lawyers are ineligible. So we probably should add that to the resolution. Um, with that, let me throw it open to the board for discussion, questions, et cetera. Ruben. Ruben, you're on mute. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's all you missed. Um, uh, needless to say, I, I, I'm in full support of this uh, item as presented by Mr. Ewart. Um, I, I echo uh, your, your sentiments, Chair, to Ms. Pansky and the other members of the commission who have put in a lot of time. I mean, Ms. Pansky made reference to that. Um, but it, it is noticeably very attorney uh, heavy, and I think of some necessity at these meetings. Um, the voice of the consumer uh, would be a welcome addition to the serious conversations that we're having. With respect to um, the issue that Ms. Pansky raised about so sort of starting over, I think one practical uh, way to, to deal with that is, is simply um, if the board decides to allow us to appoint new, new members, these folks would, would be able to review the, the videos uh, of the meetings because they've all been held on Zoom. Um, I'm assuming there would be some, um, some assistance available from staff to answer questions in, in the way that we would with any other member of a, one of our committees or commissions. And so I think that's a practical issue that we can uh, work, work around and work with. Um, and I would certainly urge uh, my fellow trustees to support this. Thank you. Thank you, Ruben. Any other discussion? Um, one other point I would like to make, and we've faced this before with other of these similar sort of special commissions and task, task forces, is that <clears throat> at least in my view, um, how votes turn out on these commissions is not as critical as you would think, because I think the board is the ultimate decision maker on issues in front of the commission. And the reason we have these commissions is that we need both experts and non-experts to chime in, do a deep dive, do a lot of study, do a lot of work. This commission has already spent a massive amount of time just really in the getting up to speed phase, as Alan Pansky described it. Um, and they bring that work product to the board. So especially if there's a close vote on the commission, um, I, for one, don't view it as controlling. It, it's a point of information for the board to ultimately consider both sides of whatever issue is, is uh, closely disputed on the commission and, and make a decision. So um, that's one reason I think altering the composition at this point, which is a favorable thing to do in my view, uh, it sort of doesn't distort the voting patterns or anything, anything like that. Um, so I'll throw that out. Unless anyone else has comments, um, do I hear a motion? Mr. Sosa, I'll move the item. Jose, thank you. Mr. Chair, um, I'd like to second it with a friendly amendment, and that is uh, to see whether your point about um, a non-lawyer meaning not a disbarred previous lawyer. Yeah, so, so Justin, um, could we add on the screen um, just something like, quote, non-lawyer means a person who has never been admitted to practice law? Point of clarification, Mr. Chair? Yes. 
would that be in California only or not in any state? Uh, I think in any state is how it's usually defined. Um, Donna, do you have any comment on that? Yes, we do typically define it as just as you say in any in any state. All right. Um, uh, Jose uh, Rubens proposed a friendly amendment. Jose, do you accept it? I do accept it as amended. Thank you. All right, we have a motion on the table. Any further discussion? Uh, Dag, please take the roll. Broughton. Yes. Chen Cisneros. Aye. De La Cruz. Yes. Delen. Delen. Duran. Aye. Ganong. Yes. Pratula. Yes. Shelby. Aye. Sowell. Aye. Stallings. Yes. Tony. Aye. And the motion carries. Thank you, Dag, and thank you to Justin as well. All right, let's move on to uh, the final item on our uh, open session agenda, item 702, approval of addition to 2021 legislative priorities. Um, Ruben is gonna take the lead on presenting this, and then um, if Donna or Dag have any further comments, we'll hear from them before we open it up to board discussion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, sort of uh, building off of what you had uh, eloquently explained in your chair's report, uh, the board now knows that SB 211 is in the legislature making its way through uh, committees. Uh, when SB 211 first came out, uh, Donna Hershkowitz in her capacity as the interim executive director uh, submitted a letter of support of that, uh, that bill, which is uh, traditional and customary in the normal course of such a bill making its way through the legislature. Um, as Sean mentioned, that bill has since been amended uh, to essentially provide what, what, uh, what I'm referring to as a no fee provision. It's, there's no, no number that's been uh, included in, into the bill, um, which automatically just creates, I think, a lot of uncertainty. Um, but there's the additional, um, the additional provision uh, saying that there will not be a fee uh, or there won't be a fee named or specified uh, unless and until a chief trial counsel um, is confirmed in the Senate. And, and uh, as Sean has rightly uh, suggested, uh, we are in, in the middle of that process, but we don't know that we're, we're done yet. Um, and so there's a fair amount of uncertainty uh, attached to that as well. I, I guess for those reasons, uh, I would suggest that we have a conversation about changing our position because as it stands now, we are in support of SB 211. Again, that would be a traditional approach that we would take. Um, given the uncertainty for our employees uh, without you know, having a, uh, an idea of what our future funding might be, um, I think we have to acknowledge that it makes it very difficult for our, our leadership, our executive leadership um, to plan how to run the organization in the coming year. Quite frankly, it makes it difficult for us as policymakers to know where uh, we can um, focus our energies and the organization's resources uh, without knowing uh, that we're going to have a stable source of funding for the coming year. And so for those reasons, uh, I think we should talk about changing our position on the bill to um, perhaps uh, an oppose and less amended position, which you know, is not the normal course of business, but I think that we have sort of found ourselves in not the normal year this year. Um, and, and with that, I, you know, I would uh, put it on the table for discussion. Okay, Donna or Dag, any, anything else to add? Yeah, I would just note that this is certainly not a recommendation that we take lightly. Um, this is something that, uh, a, a unique situation that we find ourselves in um, where we've got the legislature recommending that uh, the, Bar not have the ability to assess a fee until such time as a chief trial counsel is uh, is confirmed by the state senate. Um, we believe that uh, as you all as you all are intensely aware with all of the negotiations and discussions and meetings that have been going on about the appointment of chief trial counsel, that is something that the state bar and the board take incredibly seriously. Um, and want to want to ensure that they make the right decision. Um, and it's an unfettered decision, a decision that is not um, impacted by any uh, particular um, fear that uh, that absent a quick decision, um, the um, 
the legislature will not uh, fund the state bar. It's certainly something that uh, we know that in order for the for the bar to continue to function, we need to ensure that we are receiving a, a, a fee. And so uh, I just wanted to add that additional context to rule comments. Okay, thank you. Dag, not hearing anything. From I, I, I think you've, you've captured it. We've had many conversations about the issue and um, I think between uh, Vice Chair Duran's comments and Donna's, I think, and yours previously, I think we're there. Very good, thank you. All right, let me throw it out to the board for discussion and uh, or questions. Uh, Mark Tony. Uh, yeah, um, you know this. This is an issue that I kind of wonder why it's coming to the board. I, I kind of think that. Um, this is the type of issue that could be determined at the, at the staff level. Um, so, however, since it's come to the board, um, I, I will give my thoughts on it. Um, of course, it doesn't make sense for um, the uh, board of trustees or for the state bar to be on record supporting a bill that um, eliminates the, the, the fee, okay? That's, that's pretty clear. Um, it doesn't make sense to be in support of that. Um, but I don't know that I um, am in agreement with opposing the bill. Um, I think there's no secret that we're not, we can't be happy with a bill that doesn't have a fee that, set, that sets conditions. Um, for a fee. Um, I, what I would recommend is that uh, the state bar withdraw its um, support letter and take no position on the bill. Um, and that would be an acknowledgement uh, to, you know, that would be at least a official acknowledgement that as much as we may not like what's in the bill, that we understand some of the motivation uh, behind it, that there is some reasonableness to the frustration that um, the legisl legislative committees have of not having a chief trial counsel uh, position filled for, for four years. And so I do, you know, I, It'd be my recommendation that um, what the board do is withdraw its support position and take no further official position. Of course, we should continue with our lobbying work, our conversations. We should continue to ask that the uh, bill be modified, that the condition of the chief trial counsel um, uh, confirmation that that be um, you know changed so that there is a fee bill with a number in it. Um, that would be my recommendation. Oops, I was muted. Thanks, Mark. Uh, anyone else? This is Arnie. I think I'd like to just to pipe up on this one. And that is that uh, in some fashion, uh, I do think it's important for the board to um, articulate uh, its concerns with the uh, current state of affairs relative to the, to the fee bill. And uh, traditionally that's done uh, in the sort of the normal bill world and the normal legislative uh, world that's done through some sort of lobbying advocacy, either in a, in a committee uh, directly with uh, someone testifying you know, either for or against. Uh, sometimes it's articulated through a letter uh, that, that states a position. And um, I, think, uh, I think what you're hearing from me is I, I believe it just would be important uh, for us to uh, outline uh, whether it's, as Mark suggested, or with a withdrawal of our support uh, uh, position, uh, whether as Ruben suggests, it's, it's, it's some sort of a, a, a official or sort of opposed position unless amended, 
but I just, uh, I think there's, there needs to be some recognition of uh, what our position is. Uh, and I would also um, add that in that, whatever that, you know, line of communication is, that there also be uh, either some direction to our lobbyists or some direction to uh, you know, some of the, the, the board members that may be on the legislative liaison committee, those sorts of things, um, that there will also be uh, some sort of a delineation of all the work that we've been doing in order to try to address some of the issues that the legislature has put forward, uh, that they have raised as concerns. And um, uh, I don't know if that could be embodied in um, you know, some of what's being contemplated right now or not. I hope that it can be, but that's what I would, um, I, I think that's where I, I come down on this is that it is uh, important for us, not only to share the position that we, that we find ourselves in right now and our concerns about not having a fee, but by the same token, uh, some articulation of the work that we've been doing. Okay, thanks Arnie. Uh, anyone else? Melanie. Hello. Um, you know, the legislative process is one of making sausage. And so everyone gets the opportunity to figure out the filler and then we all get inside of the casing. And so where, um, where I do recognize and understand the importance of the, and I would have to concur with Mr. Tony, I'm uncertain that, um, I don't believe that this is an issue that the board should have to take up. I, I certainly believe that, um, I certainly am not in support of the position of where we are right now as it relates to the legislature in SB 211, but I also understand the importance of how you have conversations and you articulate your position. And so my discomfort resides from kind of putting a line in the sand with an opposed letter. I'm certainly supportive of withdrawing. I also agree with Arnie in terms of, with. Um, Arnie, in terms of just kind of laying out very clearly the delineation of what we have accomplished and done. I do think that this is all a part of the legislative advocacy effort. And I do believe that it is incumbent upon um, our legislative team, our, our lobbyists to really be able to articulate this position in the discomfort that the state bar has as it relates to the inability to do our work moving forward if the bill were to move forward in its current state. But I, I'm, I'm not in, I'm certainly in support of sharing our position. I'm in support of withdrawing the letter of support for the official letter of support for the bill. I'm not comfortable with, um, I think there are some other avenues we can follow rather than just putting going on record in terms of a pose. I think there's some other pieces that are left in front of us to explore. And I would implore our, uh, our legislative advocate, our lobbyists to be able to articulate that and help us move through that process. Okay, thank you, Melanie. Let me just address the procedural issue that's been raised. Um, I, think, uh, uh, I think staff and all board leadership also both believe we don't have authority to take positions on legislation without the board's approval. Um, but Donna, I don't know if you want to say anything about that. Uh, yes, that is that is our current um, current understanding of our legislative process that the board needs to direct uh, what the positions are that the um, that the that we take on behalf of the the bar. Um, and in light of the fact that the board clearly supported as a legislative priority, um, SB 211 and the fee that was in the bill, sort of doing anything uh, contrary to that, uh, we believe um, uh, required the direction of the board. Thank you. And to be clear, I, we, I don't th think the board needs to approve every last detail, but sort of a major yep. overarching goal. So obviously we have discussions with the legislature frequently uh, through staff and our lobbyists primarily, and also direct meetings with between uh, Ruben and me with uh, members. Um, all right, so uh, Mark Tony. Uh, Mark, you're on mute. One more um, comment. And that, that, that's kind of a big picture comment. Um, we're, we're, we're in a position where um, the, we have a lot of new board members where, you know, we've got new board leadership and we, we as a board have a commitment that we've talked about 
about a new establishing a new kind of relationship with um, you know with the, with the legislature, with um, with the public, and you know it's something we're going through now. And and one comment I want to make is when I look at um, you know different parties that 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 I'm dealing with. I guess I think it's important to treat allies. I treat allies differently than I treat adversaries, particularly when there are disagreements. And what I, what, what I think the board is moving to, and I think this is important, is re, you know, redefining our relationship with the legislature, with the legislative committees, and of really focusing on how do we treat them as allies? And I think this is important. How do we treat the state auditor as allies? Because I think that as we learn to treat them as allies, then we address our areas. Allies will sometimes have disagreements, okay? That, that doesn't mean that you're in line with everything all, all the time. But I think us moving to, uh, you, know, you know, really looking at, at um, the legislature, the auditors as allies, as partners and treating them as such, that's, that's part of the reason I'm suggesting not the opposition letter. It's okay to, to withdraw a support letter and to use other avenues of communication as both um, uh, Trustee Soul and Shelby have um, suggested. All right, thank you, Mark. Um, as we continue our discussion, Dad, can you put the proposed resolution up, including the technical amendments I sent? And then we'll see if anyone wants to make a motion based on that language or something else. If I may, Mr. Chair. Yes, please, Don. I, I just want to certainly assure the board that um, what we're looking at is um, is part of a, uh, of a broader sort of discussion with the legislature. Um, we are continuing to meet with staff. We will be meeting with members. We'll be talking about the um, um, uh, about the concerns of the bar. Uh, and the need for the funding, um, what uh, what Trustee Sowell and Trustee Shelby talked about in terms of talking about what the what the state bar has been able to achieve and what we hope to be able to achieve, right where we've been and where we still need to go. Um, those are all parts, important parts of the discussion. Um, we certainly didn't feel that we could leave the um, leave the bar in a support position, or you know, frankly, this. Um, uh, resolution comes from a perspective of we, you know, while having conversations and trying to have pr very productive conversations with legislative staff and legislators, um, we did not think that we could leave leave us in a position where we indicated uh, neutrality on um, on a fee bill that does not include a fee and specifically conditions the fee on the confirmation of a chief trial counsel. Thank you, Donna. Uh, Ruben. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, I'm appreciative of the conversation, right? And I, I think it's important for us to have these conversations as a body, um, as you know, we relate to our stakeholders, um, to use Mark's word, our, our, our allies in, in our collective mission, right, of protecting the public and, and um, ensuring access to justice. And, and I certainly did not intend uh, by introducing the item to suggest that that I, I saw any adversity between the bar and the legislature. And I, I think that sort of the work that many folks have been doing, uh, myself included, over the past several months in, in efforts to deal with the issues as they arise, um, have, you know, they leave me heartened that there, that there, is, um, there is a path forward that uh, respects the legislative view, that respects um, this board's you know, policy direction and still gets us to a place where uh, our staff can do the job that they are statutorily required to do. Um, if that means if that means withdrawing a letter of support uh, and, and staying neutral, and the, and the board decides that, of course, that's you know that that um, that would be okay with me. But I I did and I still do feel um, that we're you know we're engaged in the legislative process, and it is not uncommon 
for um, an organization or an interest group that is affected uh, or could be affected negatively by a piece of legislation to make their uh, their position uh, clear and and um, unequivocal. And so, uh, again, if, if that's an opposed um, unless amended, if that's a statement of uh, some other thing upon withdrawal of our previous letter, whatever it is, I think that uh, it's important for us to, you know, as a as an organization, as a body, um, engage in the legislative process. That's all. Thank you, uh, Ruben. Brandon. So I, I'm in, in support of, of what Ruben just proposed and might add that um, you know, because the legislative process is very fluid, uh, maybe uh, give the legislative liaisons on the board uh, a little bit more freedom to engage in that fluidity uh, so they can respond in a timely way. Uh, but I, I really do think that we, we do need to take a strong stand um, you know, to Mark Tony's point uh, that the legislator is our ally in this. Uh, I certainly hope that um, anyone in government uh, looks to better serve Californians and to protect Californians. And I think that we have that common mission. And so I would love to see us continue to work with the legislator to, uh, to have the funding that we need to protect Californians. And I think that's certainly the goal of every uh, board member here. How we get there, uh, we, have, we have a lobbyist, we have uh, legislative liaisons with expertise in this area. And so I'm comfortable with an agenda item that gives them the freedom to uh, ex make our points, uh, to do what uh, Arnie suggested and have, our, have a list of what we've done to try and meet the expectations of the legislature to, um, you know, specific, specifically in regards to bifurcation. And now we're uh, solely a regulatory agency. I think that's a very powerful point that we can make. And so I think we can, can continue to make that through the avenues that we have. So I would support, I don't, I don't know if we need to change the resolution, but I would support um, the spirit of what's being resolved here. Mr. Chair, may, may I make a point of order? I apologize. It looks like trustees so well, um, maybe in the uh, attendee waiting to be promoted to a panelist, oh. or he was at least. Thank you. I'm sure uh, staff will take care of that right away. Thank you. Uh, also, as a point of information, um, uh, Brandon mentioned our legislative liaisons. Uh, because of the importance of this issue, I want the board to know that the chair and the vice chair, along with Arnie as legislative liaison, are uh, directly engaged in this issue. Uh, and let's get Arnie on and make sure we hear from him if he wishes to talk. Looks like Arnie's a panelist now. Uh, so let's see, um, further discussion, would anyone, or would anyone like to make a motion? Sean, I'll uh, make the motion. Thank you. Okay, so I, you're moving the language that's on the screen? Correct. All right, thank you. I'll Is second. second? Second by Mark, motion by Brandon, second by Mark. Uh, discussion? And to be clear, Mark Broughton. Yes, thank you. And so let me uh, just volunteer procedurally. There's So there's kind of two options that have been discussed, which is to either adopt this language or to modify it, um, that the position of the board is to withdraw its support of SB 211. So um, if, um, those who favor withdrawal as opposed to opposition, you can either uh, move to amend the motion or you can simply vote no on this and then make a second motion as you prefer. Mr. Chair, this is Arnie. Um, would this motion also allow for uh, some additional um, you know, information as I as I indicated earlier to be presented to the legislature about what it is that we have been doing. Oh, absolutely. Okay. This this motion is broad enough to allow for that. Yes, I think I don't think that requires board approval. Okay. Um, and so that's something that we are continually doing because we want to keep our legislative um, partners apprised of, of what's happening with the organization. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll move an amendment and it will be um, to say um, it, it's uh, withdraw um, the support letter. And uh, so just in terms of the language, Mark, would it, I think, would it work to, on your motion to amend, to strike the word opposition and replace that with withdrawal of its support of? Yes, yes. Um, I think that the withdrawal can also include a statement of concern. Just, I don't know exactly how to word it, but that's, that's the meaning of okay. what I want. Dag, let's just make it simpler, please. And in the existing one, strike the word opposition. So are we gonna vote on the one that's on the screen or is this going to, no, I just don't wanna lose the language that we were gonna vote on. This, and that this is a, that's okay, it's a simple change. So this is a motion to amend. Okay. So if there's a second, we'll be having a vote on the motion to amend first prior to the main motion. I can. Okay. And Melanie has seconded. So, so just strike opposition and replace it with uh, withdrawal of its support of, just because we have all those conditions and everything that I, uh, I assume should stay unless, unless Mark has a different view on that because it's his motion. Uh, and Mark, you wanted to add some, some additional language about... Um, uh, well, just, okay, then I would say after it says SB 2, 2, 211, um, uh, a little, um, and submit a letter of concern and get rid of the rest of it. Uh, oh, all right. I don't view that as a friendly amendment. It sounds like an additional uh, resolution or a separate. It, 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 well, is, it is. It is a. I, I did not introduce it as a friendly amendment. I introduced it as a motion to amend. Right, which I invited. And so. Um, so, Dag, what I would recommend is uh, just hit enter a couple times so you save that conditional language and then go back up to SB, the end of uh, that, and, and add Mark's language. Mark, as opposed to uh, one thing I'd prefer is that we just leave the verb as uh, communicate rather than specify a letter or not. Okay, and communicate. And communicate concern. I like that. I like that. Thank you. Withdraw the support for uh, 22 to 11 and its concerns because we've got and the verb up above. We've got our concern. And to communicate, we've got communicate up here. So I thought it would be communicate okay. on behalf of and okay. its concerns. Sure. All right. So that is, uh, Melanie, do you accept that as a friendly uh, amendment? I, to the, I, I think uh, we need a little more language before we can. Oh, all right. And its concerns right. regarding the new amendment. Okay, thank you. Uh, Melanie, do you accept that as a friendly amendment to the motion to amend? Or in plain English, do you agree with Mark's additional change? I do, I just think we should, um clean it up just a little bit, um, that the Board of Trustees authorize the State Bar staff to work with the chair of the Board of Trustees on behalf of the full board. I, I think that whole on behalf of the full board to the legislature, the State Bars, that part could probably be cleaned up. I don't have to direct anyone on how to clean that up, but. Or maybe resolve that the Board of Trustees authorizes State Bar staff to withdraw support of SB 211 and work with the chair of the Board of Trustees to, com to, to communicate the full board's concerns regarding the new amendments. That might be an easy way to read it. Sorry. Sounds good. Yes, I accept. We're, we're still not there. So just so I can keep up with you, I apologize. No, I'm the sorry. Board, board of Trustees authorizes State Bar staff to withdraw support for SB 211 and work with the chair of the Board of Trustees to communicate 
to the legislature, the state bars. Concerns. Concerns regarding the amendments. Okay. Thank you, Dag. Of course, no, thank you. Uh, all right. Um, unless there's further discussion, let's take a vote on the motion to amend. Uh, so this is solely a vote on the motion to amend the proposals, actually not a vote to adopt the language. So uh, if you're in favor of the proposed amendment, let's take a roll call on whether you're in favor of the proposed amendment. Rotten. No. Chen Cisneros. Aye. De La Cruz. Yes. Delenn. Yes. Duran. No. Ganong. No. Pertula. Yes. Shelby. Aye. Sowell. Aye. Stallings. No. Tony. Aye. There's seven yeas and four nays. The yeas carry. All right. Thank you, Dag. All right, so the motion on the table now is um, in front of you. Uh, is there further discussion? Uh, if not, so Dad, we do take the roll and to be clear, the question before you now is whether to adopt as a resolution the language on the screen. Do, uh, and just a point of clarification here. So the previous motion to uh, approve was made by somebody who opposed the uh, proposal to amend. So do we need a new motion? No, no, no. It was a motion to amend by Mark Tony, seconded by Melanie, which passed. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And so that means that the language in front of us is now on the screen as opposed to the original language that you put up, uh, Dag. So, um, so the question now is, shall the board adopt the language on the screen as the position of the Board of Trustees? Uh, and unless there's further discussion, Dag, please take the roll on that question. Broughton. No. That was no. Got it. Uh, Chen Cisneros? Aye. De La Cruz? Yes. Delenn? Yes. Duran? Yes. Ganong? No. Pertula? Yes. Shelby? Aye. Sowell? Aye. Stallings? No. Tony? Aye. The motion carries. All right. Thank you. Uh, thanks, everyone, for your discussion and participation. Um, that will complete the items on our open session agenda. Uh, it's about noon, so we will uh, take a short break and uh, reconvene at 1210 in closed session. We will be convening in closed session pursuant to government code sections 11126 to 11126.2 as well as government code section 11126 subdivision A1. And to be clear, the open session will be um, recessed. We will return to open session at the end of closed to complete the meeting, but there will be no more discussion of open session items just for the information of the public. All right, so board members, I will we will see each other in the closed session link at 1210. Uh, yes, Melanie. Mr. Chair, what time will we be breaking for lunch? Well, we're scheduled to end at one. Okay. So I think um, I think we'll, we'll plan on lunch at hopefully no later than one, and we'll be done. Okay, thank you. And team, I did not um, send a second closed session link. So uh, the previous link that you received for closed session should be the link that you followed to get there. Thank you. Very good. All right. Thanks, everyone. See you in a few minutes. All right, uh, the, the Board of Trustees has returned to open session uh, to announce that we have completed our closed session agenda for the day and we have nothing to announce. Thanks again to everyone for participating and I'll see you at the next meeting.